everyone. Now today I've got a bit of uh, hands-on work to do, or tomorrow depending on the, what the weather does. Um, I'm going to install a wideband discone antenna on the roof. And I'm going to use the same antenna stand, the mask that I used uh, for the last time I did this, which is still up there and it survived some storms, so it went well, I'm going to do it again. Things I'll need is a cable to come from the antenna to the Hack RF. So this is what I'm setting up. I've got a Raspberry Pi 3 here, which will be controlling the Hack RF, which will go to an RF amplifier and not to this antenna, that's just for testing. That output will go through the uh, SMA connector, through some cable to the N-type connector, up to the antenna. So obviously this is for transmitting. Now to power this, I'm going to run it off PoE, and I'm taking 12 volts out of this and just putting it into a 12 to 5 volt converter. So the 5 volt runs the Raspberry Pi. And the 12 volt side, I'm going to put into this amp, which would like 15 according to it, but it's going to get 12 and be happy with it. Now that's obviously just for testing. Um, this is transmitting from here. The existing receiver is using the antenna that's already up on the roof, so it's going through all the roof in the house. But again, just for a test, um, I had a look on Libra NMS last night as well, just to see how much process it takes, whether the Raspberry Pi can handle it, and it seems to be able to. So it's just going to be for mucking around and a bit of bit of learning and stuff, getting back into it. So I'll have one transmitter and one or two receivers, and that's that. All right, so there it is. That stuff will be going up in the roof, and uh, the antenna and the mast will be going on top of the roof, obviously. This is the processor usage uh, from last night when I did about a half hour test, or a bit longer actually. Um, it averaged around 30% processor. You can see when I stopped it, obviously the processor went back to, back to idle, but that's good enough. Raspberry Pi 3, and uh, it'll do for now to give me something to play with. Okay, so here I am in the roof, and I've got the existing um, SDR receivers. You can see I've just got the existing antenna and split split the output into two from the SMA to these MCX connectors. But I've just turned this one off, so I'm going to remove that one. And I might get a better cable that's just for the one there in the future, or I might put a second receiver back in. But for now, I'm just going to throw that down and do something with this mess. Okay, so this is going to be temporary because uh, I haven't got the antenna up and it's started to rain so I'm not going to put that up until tomorrow if the weather's good but uh, as I showed before the Raspberry Pi powered from the PoE splitter it'll be feeding the um, Hack RF of course I'll just use this little antenna for now just to play around until I get the main antenna on the roof so again here's the old one connected to the antenna and the new one which will have the antenna connected to that um, RF amplifier there then I'll mount it in some way to take, take the stress off these cables. Right, well tomorrow came around and as you can see, it's pissing down. And that means my plan to mount the antenna on the roof has gone tits up. So I'm going to scratch that idea and do it another time. So instead, I'm going to uh, set up the receiving antenna on the Raspberry Pis and run GNU radio on there to serve them so I can use GNU radio locally on my machines down here. So I'll do that instead. Okay, I thought I'd do a crazy experiment here. I uh, put GNU radio on a Raspberry Pi 1 up in the roof and I'm just tuning a frequency and then sending it out as UDP onto the network. So down here on this main computer, I'm receiving the UDP and just putting it on an FFT chart here. And you can see the data coming in in the background, of course. But you can also see this is the Raspberry Pi in the roof and I've got a lot of these uh, overruns here. Basically, it can't keep up. And this is very jerky. It's not nice and smooth. And if I have a look at its processor usage, uh, you can see here it's it's flat out 100 percent okay so i knew it would struggle but I, I just had to try so apparently it's harder for it to uh stream data out as udp using gnu radio than it is for the rtl tcp server i haven't actually looked at the data type that it's sending out yet but um I'm, as far as i'm aware it should be 8-bit uh, signed inq messages all the same so i would have thought you know since it's just udp and it's the same um, data coming out that would have been similar but that's why I have to try it and what I did notice when I have a look at the uh, network traffic it's coming out it's ooh, hang on it's about 38 meg a second coming out um, with 2 meg RF bandwidth obviously so 38 meg when I use RTL TCP it's about 35 so it is a little bit of extra here so something's different about it 
But either way, the end result is it can't do it, so I'll get a more modern Raspberry Pi and see if that can do it. All right, while it's raining, I thought I'd take all the stuff down and redo it. Um, I'd like to get some more modern Raspberry Pis, but for now this is what I've got. I've got two Raspberry Pi 1s with one of these RTL SDR dongles here, and the Raspberry Pi 3 that'll be going to the Hack RF for transmit. So that's why it's got the power amp on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zip tie them basically to this block of wood. A uh, bit rough and ready, but it'll do the job. All right, so here it is, my radio setup. I've got uh, three SDRs. I've got the two receivers here on these Raspberry Pis and the Hack RF on the Raspberry Pi 3. And the RF of that goes to the RF amp, which will connect to the new antenna when the rain stops and I put it on the roof. So that's that, and I'll just put this in the roof now and uh, play with receive only until I can transmit. All right, the light's not real good up here. But um, what I've decided to do is just use it, zip ties again and just tie it up to these, uh, these brackets that are part of the trusses. So it's me screwing the wood into the, the wooden truss, so I'm not really messing with the roof as such. Just uh, hanging this off it kind of thing. All right, so that's where that lives. Just uh, strapped to the truss up here, so it's close to the antenna runs, which I'll plug in now, power it all up. All right, so the existing antenna fees just go to that. Do this the easy way. Put one in there. Why don't I just break the infrared receiver? Not a problem. That one goes in there. And this one in there. And that can sort of live somewhere. Probably should have put that through one of the zip ties too, but. I'll leave them hanging for now, but what I would do, once I do this permanently, is just wrap them around the wood a couple of times to take the weight so, so I don't have the weight hanging on there like that. All right, the weather's cleared up a bit. Um, it's still, there's still cloud everywhere, but according to the weather radar, there shouldn't be any more rain coming. So I'm sick of waiting, so I'm gonna try and put this antenna up now. So there we go. All right, so I just wanna look at the tools I need. And one thing in particular, the antenna mast, I want to get the, uh, the bolts that it's going to screw into the roof, like that. I'm going to take a socket up so I don't have to muck around. Up there, I'll just get that organised down here. Like that, like that thing, and the thing. Right. So I'll be right when I get up there. Alright, I've got my antenna, my mast, bag of tools, and a ladder. So off I go. Try to get it in a similar spot to where that is, which means under this tile here. Yeah. One has a nice stop on the end, that one didn't. This is cool that I can copy the other one. The idea being this will go under the tile, mount to there. I'm not bringing the camera here to show you. Right, so I can feel that the truss is, is there. So, uh, just down the middle of it. So I'll cut into a bit of that sarking there. Get to it. Okay, so that's what we're going to use. Drill into there. And these brackets here, are sort of designed so they go in there and then pop out under the tile here. So, time to drill.
have been nice if it was on one of these flat parts, it's right on the, the angled part, but it will work. Because I'll make it work. rest of them anyway. Something like that. Alright, that's the main mast and I know it's some of its own weight will help push this thing down as well once that gets up there. So that'll be fine. bolts and things on, apart from the ones that went into the truss, those those screws there, I'm just going to put these bolts on light so I can adjust stuff later, tighten them all up when they're in position. Right, so these kind of do that, I'll find where they're going when I get to it. Right there. This is how it ends. Let's <laughs> do that level by eye and then I'll level it right up with the side ones.
at you from a structural point of view. Not fucking going anyway. That one didn't go anyway. So watch with this. I'm getting the cable ready. That's the SMA end that's going to go through the tiles into the roof. And the end type end, which is going to go up into this thing. Up in this motherfucker. There's the end type. And shove it in there. Not that in. Okay. Screw this back on. These tiny screws that would probably be easy to lose. Some kind of sitting comfortably here at the moment. Last time I did this, when I put that upper antenna up, it was hot as hell, it really was. But now it's not so bad. There's the diamond antenna, D3000N, 25 to 3000 megahertz. Hmm, it's a pretty good antenna, I know that. So if it does get water on it, it won't trickle that way, it'll trickle down that way. It's really going to be a problem though. <coughs> and you don't need knuckles, but that's fine. Alright, here it is. It's all installed except for one of these elements because I dropped one of these little hex screws down the roof somewhere. I'll have a look for it, but if I don't find it, well, it's just too bad. Better than nothing. Put some zip ties on the cable as well just to uh, keep it neat. Okay, since I decided to change the setup up in the roof, I need some cables to run from that antenna down to the wall here, but I do not have what I need. So I'm gonna, it's gonna be really rough. I'm gonna go from the F type to SMA through a splitter simply because I don't have this to extend to F type cables that I've got up there. Uh, I'm just gonna rig something together until I can order some cables and get them uh, delivered. So in this room, I've already got this uh, F type connector on the wall. So I'm just gonna use that since it's already in there. And of course that's the network cable for this computer here. Okay, I found the cable. So that'll be the truss where I um, screwed that center to. And here's the SMA that's come down through the roof. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect the third SDR receiver from over there and take it back down because I've decided against using that. Alright, now this is the point where this installation gets a bit rough. I've got the SMA connector here, and I've got the cable that goes down to that wall, which is F-Type and RG6 cable. Now, I don't have an adapter to put them in. I've got every other combination of these, but not the ones I need. So I'm going to use a splitter, because <laughs> I just don't have um, anything else. I've got an SMA to F-Type on that end of the splitter, so I can plug the uh, SMA in there, and just plug the F-Type in one of the... Um, the other connectors here. 
The thing is, this, this splitter doesn't cover the whole bandwidth that the Hack RF can, so what I'll do is order some parts here so I can do this without the splitter. But for now, it'll get me, uh, get me connected so I can at least play with something. All right. All right, given the cables that I could find, All right, the only cables I could find mean that this is going to be absolutely ridiculous. So don't try this at home. Okay, over in the, uh, no, the wall over there, I have an F-type connector, right? That's an F-type connector. So from there, I've got to get to the SMA connector on the Hack RF. That's all I've got to do. Now to do that, all I've got is an F-type to TV antenna cable. Okay, so I now have that female TV to make that F-type to F-type male. One of those will go down to that end. Up at this end, for another splitter, which is just as bad as in the roof. Okay, because I don't have a female to female F-type connector. That feels dodgy anyway. From there, <laughs> F-type to SMA. Okay, and then a little jumper lead jumping away. We'll jump a cable from there, finally, to the Hack RF. Now there's about a million dB of loss along the way here, but it'll do for now. So plug that in down the bottom, and that is connected to the antenna on the roof, very roughly. So now I'll just get the Hack RF and Plug it into this thing for now, I suppose. Right. Right, so now I'll just get the uh, Hack RF and plug it into the computer. And it's there. I'll see how it goes. Okay, now if I start this up, I should have the Hack RF on here. Here it is. And I'm going to go right to 20 meg bandwidth. Because I can, I should be able to. So bang, do that there, start that. And if I center this on, what, 98, I suppose. And I'll put a couple of radio stations on there. If I put that to 98, that will be the center of the FM band. So what you can see there are all the radio stations. i just get this easier to see. There. So each one of those spikes is a radio station. So here's the frequencies down there. So there's a 97.3 somewhere. And there's a, I don't know what frequency that is, but it's there. And 104.5 is triple M. So there's 20 meg of bandwidth, all visible. So my little cable does work, but um, that'll be a lot better once I get, obviously, better cables and, and less adapters. So it works. That's the main thing. And um, Coast's best music. It's right from the start. As we left office, in some steps backward, but I don't. Music on Thursday and Friday. It's alright, it's alright, it's alright. Everything's alright. Ooh, what's that? Ah, that would be the uh, cordless microphone, 612.6 meg. So um, if anyone was listening in, they would have got a sneak preview of what I was doing here. But that gives you an idea of the delay anyway. It's pretty close to real time, not much in it, except a bit of feedback. All right, so there it is, my antenna's up. Um, that's the main thing. I can get these adapters to fix up the setup down here in the coming days. Um, but it gives me more flexibility having it down here rather than being just a transmitter up there. First of all, the computer's more powerful and I can use 20 meg of bandwidth connected directly in here. And also, when I want to transmit, I can put the amplifier on to the Hack RF, 
but that would be a problem when I, if I were receiving, okay, to have to try and come back through the ant, which wouldn't work. So it gives me more flexibility and um, more power. So I'll probably start playing with more RF stuff in the future, get back into it. That's what I want to do. So um, that's what you might look forward to if I uh, find some interesting things to come up with. Until then, take it easy.